the, the angles right of this box, um, I think it'll, it'll work out. Um, I forgot to start recording. So we are recording now and we'll be going for about 20 minutes. So at 10.40, um, Jenny should be wrapping up. Okay. And as you can see, I'm working with kind of a light green pencil. You, you, might, not, uh, you might not even see, see that very well um, because it's so light green. But um, I kind of, instead of using like a pencil and later working on top of it with like a, like a felt tip pen or something, I really like to use light colors. And it really doesn't matter if it's a color pencil or an acrylic marker or anything. Um, I just like to use kind of um, a light pen as, as a way to kind of figure out the basic things I want to um, I want to depict in my drawing. And if I'm like sure that I've put everything in the right spot, um, I will change to a darker color to define all these elements a bit more and a bit better. And what I really like about working with a color background is um, if you look at this tree, it kind of has these like violet, purplish flowers in it. Um, and I mean, it's a different color, but I kind of like that this, this neon ink that I put uh, on the page in the very beginning, it's kind of like glowing through or shining through um, the green that I'm putting on top. Mm, those complementary colors. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I don't really plan stuff like that. I mean, I, I know these are nearly complementary colors and so on, but um, a lot of my drawings are just like <sighs> happy accidents mm -hmm. to use the word of Bob Ross. Mm -hmm. He was very wise. A wise man. I think it's like the artist I most like to quote in my workshop. <laughs> and it's like really irritating to people. Really? But yeah, of course, because I don't know. I think many people think like I'm serious about liking his pictures and I don't. I just like, <laughs> I just like his vibe, you know? Yeah. Everybody does. I don't yeah. like pictures. And he just said some really, you know, smart things about drawing but he just said them and didn't incorporate like his own advice into his paintings I think <laughs> so I've got a box of a car and now I'm adding some wheels and this oh like the front wheel is like has like a, a weird angle I'm not sure I'm going to, to get that right. Okay. Okay, now this, this picture doesn't look like much now. How much time do I have left? 15 minutes. Oh. <laughs> it, more than I thought. Oh, good. That was a good yeah. oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm using a bit of a darker color right now and already defining some of the details. Like the interior of that car is really black. I find it really challenging to define or try to decide what to show on the inside of the car when I'm drawing cars. Yeah, there are a bunch of uh, different strategies. I think like in this example, the shadow, like, uh, like 
what you see through the front window is quite dark. And I think like a nice detail to like um, to keep in mind is the steering wheel. If you just hmm. like leave like one like curved line for the steering wheel, it really gives the picture quite a bit of depth. And um, I mean, if you think uh, that, like, I mean, there are a couple of urban sketches who kind of like specialize in car drawing. Yes. Um, and I think if you look at pictures like of Lapin, uh, like this French urban sketcher who like, I mean, oh, you all know him, I guess, but like he's when Lapin. Famous yeah, he's, guy. Yeah, Lapin is famous. Sylvain, Sylvain, huh? Sylvain Coda. No, I don't think so. I don't know that one. But like Lapin does, when he does like, he does like this fine liner drawings. And I think what he does with the interior of the car is that he switches to like a light gray fine liner instead of a black mm. one. So that's also an option to, I think it's just um, like maybe a good idea to treat the interior of the car a bit differently than the exterior. Either you just put everything in, in shadow um, or you keep it like lighter to suggest, you know, because you're looking through glass and maybe the glass, um, yeah, kind of lets you see less detail. So I think um, yeah, that's also an option. Yeah. yeah, that steering wheel tip is really helpful. I also dropped a link to La Palm's work in the chat if you aren't familiar with his stuff. He can just draw anything. He just draws the hell out of anything. Oh. And he's an incredibly nice person. Yeah. But that can be said about most urban sketches. Mm -hmm. oh, it's so hard to draw and talk at the same time. Right? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry if I'm not making sense. I just hope it kind of does. Yeah, it's like stream of consciousness. And you have 10 minutes left. Okay. So I really I also want to, see. yeah, I want to add some of the background because I really like this, um, this building that's under construction. Um, yeah, I, I really like these scenes that are kind of messy. Mm -hmm. um, and not like very smooth, very clean. Um, it's just, for me personally, it's much more fun to draw. One nice thing about Google Street View is you can stop and draw things that you probably wouldn't be able to or necessarily want to in real life. It could be very hard to get this angle of the car if you were actually there. Yeah, definitely. Hey. Really coming, it's coming together. It's like emerging out of your paper. Is it? I don't feel like it right now, but thank you. Thank you for encouraging me. Sometimes drawing is like, what the hell am I doing? And sometimes like, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what kind of drawing this will become. Okay, I think I need some like flat, dark areas to help me pull this together. So I really like the shadow behind the tree. And I just realized I put the tree way too low. Mm. Um, but yeah, because I just worked um, with, with, the, with kind of this very pastel kind of green. It doesn't really matter. I can fix that mistake. I saw you just put your Posca marker in water a little bit. Does that help it get started? Yeah. Um, 
yeah, sometimes the tip gets a little bit dry. And of course, like with acrylic markers, you can just like pump it and the ink will flow to the tip again. But um, yeah, just dip it in a bit of water. It's like a very quick fix. Hmm. I'll have to try that. So satisfying watching you do this. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. That's good. negative shape. Yeah, negative shapes are my friend. Yeah, and as you can see, I'm working with a mix of materials. I just like I like mixed media. I have like transparent colors and these opaque acrylic markers and the colored pencils to create kind of more texture. And um, I really like using different media to create like interest and in different textures. It's just very satisfying to do. One of you is making some funky noises. At you, Eleanor. Okay, I only have like six minutes or so left, right? Right. <sighs> what have I got? What can happen in two minutes? We'll see. I hope a lot can happen in six minutes. Oh no. I mean, this is a, a very complicated thing to do in, um, in 20 minutes. Yeah, and you're working pretty large as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm making a lot of bad decisions today. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay. Break. Trying to make this tree look like more of a tree. Someone in the chat just asked if you prefer smooth or textured paper when using all these mediums. Um, I prefer whatever I can get my hands on, really. Um, I do like um, paper with a bit of texture, I think. Just um, um, because I like creating texture, um, it's just better if the paper has a bit of grain because um, yeah, it helps helps just with, with like media. If you want to like create a dry brush effect and stuff like that, that's just a bit easier with, um, with textured paper, I think. Nice, nice tree. So, car, quickly. Get that occlusion, those dark areas in the bottom of the car. Really make it look ca so car like. So car y. So car y. I, yeah, I was going to say that and then decided not to say that. So, thank you for saying that. Thank you for messing with the English language. Car-like, car-esque. 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 Vehicular. I mean, this car must have like the grill, like the front is really strange. So I think you really see that in the shadow part that um, like weird stuff is going on there. Another question for you. What kind of pencils work over the acrylic inks? Um, I think the bet I think I would go um, 
<laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I think the most important part is um, that they're um, high quality, like artist grade um, colored pencils. I have um, some that are water soluble. I think this light green one is water soluble, but I also look uh, use a lot of like wax or oil based uh, markers. So um, yeah. Something is wrong with this light, so never mind. Oh, this is like the worst car I've drawn in a while. No. <laughs> it is, it is. But never mind, there are, we're going. You have about two minutes left to to fix it. Maybe yeah, I will bring it together. Yeah, this car looks like a pancake. Oh, <laughs> it's really bad. I can fix it. I don't know if in the next two minutes, but it's fixable, I hope. That's the nice thing about working with these acrylic markers is that you can like try to fix your mistakes. Oh, yeah, but over and over. Over and over. And that adds like a nice texture too, seeing those that history of marks and stuff. I think it's really nice. Okay, can you give me like two minutes more? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because this, this is, it's, it would be tragic if I stopped now. Yeah, just get it to a good spot in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, I'll, I'll hurry, but yeah. Is that a wax crayon? Yeah, that's a wax crayon. It's like a Neo, Neo Color by Carandash. I think it's one of those. They have like um, water soluble and, and like wax or oil based ones. And this is the, the wax, wax crayon. This is like a brush pen. They're like um, shadows on the buildings, but they're kind of subtle because the buildings are white. But I want to get them to be a bit darker. I like that color. What color is that? It's called pastel blue. Oh, cool. And because it's on top of that kind of, yeah, this, um, this other shade, it just mixes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like becomes a neutral. Yeah, they kind of like mm -hmm. cancel each other out a bit. Yeah, there we go. I like your like lost and found shapes. Yeah, um, I think it, it could use a bit more definition, but I'm kind of not sure myself which colors I want. But um, yeah, I think you, you, you get the, you kind of get how my workflow is. It's not, it's really mm -hmm. one of my, it's really a bad drawing. <laughs> say I don't like it at all. Oh, but the mixed media is really cool to see, though, and seeing your decision process, how you react to what's on the page already. Yeah, I think is really helpful. Also, like many things, if you don't look at it for a few hours or you come back, you might really like it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Maybe it improves a bit with time. Or mm -hmm. I'll look also, at it with fresh pressure. eyes. Yeah, I mean, I'll look at it with fresh eyes and maybe I'll improve uh, certain parts of it. But yeah, for now it's okay. Um, yeah. It's good to me though. Like so yeah, but the car is quite shit. The, <laughs> the car is quite bad, to be honest. But yeah, that's let's not um, 
keep looking at my picture. Let's look at other pictures. <laughs> okay, thank you for showing us this demo. Um, applause, yay! Yay! <laughs> thank you, Jenny.